Hey there. My name's Jelly, and I'm pleased to be here. And it's, uh, I love Mark and Doris, so it's nice being with them. And it's good to see a lot of faces I haven't seen in a long time. Let's see, is anything up? Yes and no. So I've been working in advertising for about 20 years, I guess, as a uh, creative person. Started as an art director and then became a writer and a creative director. And I want to tell you a little bit about my experience with yes and no and the power of yes. I'd say for about the first 15 years of me being in this business, I kind of came from the yes and no school of how to be a creative, which is you say yes to everything that you think is good for you, and you say no to everything that seems to threaten you. And those things that threaten you could be the partner you're assigned with, or the client that you're working on, or the client's request, or what creative director you work, are working under, or what kind of conditions or what kind of budget. You say no to all of those things because they threaten something. And you say yes to everything that's acceptable. And I would guess that, that worked for me in that I got promoted and good things happened and I made work that I was proud of. But I was a little bit exhausted. Um, it's a little bit like flying a kite by running. Um, you can do it. Um, but I found that using the wind is a little bit easier way to fly a kite. And so for me, using the wind was uh, the power of yes and what that meant for me. And I think that with the yes-no culture of a creative, which is trying to fight against anything that you want to, uh, that is threatening you. Um, you risk a few things. You risk creating a lot of arrogance in yourself by thinking that you have the answer and everybody else is trying to threaten your answer. Um, I think you risk not participating fully in the experience because you're saying no to so many things. You're rejecting a lot of things from your experience. And I finally, I feel like your work isn't as good, or at least I'm speaking for myself. I thought my work was a little bit stiff and maybe a little bit protected. And uh, I found that I was able to get to some more interesting places by saying yes more. So here's what yes means uh, to me. I'll try this one. So everything that comes in front of your experience when, you, when you've got kind of a yes, no mentality is you evaluate it right away. You become a judge. Is that good or is that bad? Is that going to help me or is that going to threaten me? And um, I find that that judging attitude closes things down. Um, the yes, no culture is a little bit about focused on the outcome. You know, I've got to do this great piece of work, so I'm going to say yes or no, anything that's going to stop me from doing that piece of work. And that, the, the, the end game is uh, kind of what the focus is. And I think that saying yes, you kind of accept the process might be a little tangly. So it's a little bit way I think you can be a little bit more present. Yes is, to me, means saying yes to limits. Um, a lot of times you use kind of that yes, no excuse um, as a way when somebody comes in and says we only have so and such budget or it's only going to run here or it's for this. Um, I, Jamie Barrett, a, a, a friend of mine, said, uh, talk, talked about how playing tennis without a net just isn't fun and some, somehow about limiting um, your, what you're trying, you, the circumstances that are around your creating when there are limits sometimes uh, you can do wonderful things. Like that image is an architectural challenge of how do you build houses in this environment that only has sand. And um, they filled those little, little funny little tube-shaped bags with it, and they became bricks. Um, the notion of uh, this yes-no culture of, you know, please don't threaten my sacred idea is this constant vibe of fear of, like, what's the bad news today? Um, and uh, that becomes self-fulfilling, I think, that kind of fearful mentality around creative work. Um, I think ultimately there is, if you surrender to kind of a yes culture, um, you end up manifesting more gratitude in your life, and I think that attracts good things. Um, I think that ideas that are against your experience when you adopt a yes culture um, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. You know, you're supposed to uh, feel weird around the dominatrix, but you say yes, and then you open yourself up to something that you might not have learned about. I hope that's been positive for your marriage, Tom. Um, <laughs> forgiving, just the idea that everybody who is out to get you, 
Um, it kind of yes, you know, if, if you tr trace back every single thing that you thought was negative in your life, well, it led you to where you are right now. So uh, it's hard not to be a little uh, forgiving around that. Ultimately, uh, I think it's a yes is an attitude of love, which I don't think is love hippie. Hey, I love everything. Everything's great. I love. But love to me is more about acknowledging the current conditions and, and saying this is acceptable and working with that. In fact, um, I think it's actually a, 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 a state of tension. And I think my evolution of my understanding of what yes is means not giving up what you want for reality, but for holding the tension between those two conditions. Um, I worked with a coach when I, I got a, a, a promotion to a job that I didn't know what I was doing, so I got a coach to help me. And he said that the, the best conditions for growth is a state of creative tension where you're standing in full honesty but also full humanity. And in that tension, growth comes out. So actually, I'm kind of backing off from a yes culture about abandoning what you want and embracing everything. Um, and more about holding the condition of what you're looking for and what your goal is and also what reality brings. And in that tension, if you can be comfortable in that tension, I believe good things come. So you have A and you have B, but what happens when you hold A and B together and what comes out of that? I see Barack Obama dealing with that. I see a lot of people dealing with that right now. And any resemblance to this symbol is purely coincidental, I'm sure. Okay, thanks.